Hi, I'm Ben, I like Kill Team, and I want to talk about it. All right, folks, the White Dwarf Gene Stealer Cult Worm Blade Kill Team, boy, it's a mouthful, uh, has been leaked, released, or I think it'll be actually released to the public in a few days at the time of recording this, but some people have gotten an early copy, so we have gotten to you know get our grubby little mitts on the PDFs online, uh, and I'm really excited about it. Just full disclosure, I think this is probably my favorite White Dwarf release so far. Not That doesn't equate to power level or anything, but I think it's just my favorite, and I have some things that I want to say. I want to talk about it. Now, I'm not a Gene Stealer Cult player, but I have played Gene Stealer Cults more than probably any other kill team in this edition. My brother Sam uh, is a Gene Stealer Cult uh, player. He plays Gene Stealer Cults and Crute, like two very different teams. Gene Stealer Cults are awesome and Crute are not as awesome. Uh, and uh, so I've had a lot of experience with them and I think they're a great team. I think they're some, some of the best that the Compendium has to offer, personally. Uh, and so I, I love everything about this uh, Wormblade team, so I'll shut up and we'll get into it. Maybe the most obvious thing about the Wormblade kill team uh, is the new models, right? You've got Kellermorph, you've got the Sanctus models, you've got the Locust, uh, and these are all these three APL models, still about human power level, nine wounds, right? But special rules, uh, and I love this. I wanna see it bleed into every future kill team release, and I also want them to go back and give it to all the ones that have already been released, right? I'm a big guard fan, so I would love to see, uh, give us rules for a commissar, right? Um, I would love to say, hey, you can take an Ogren or Bulgren, but it's gonna cost you three guardsmen. Or you can take a Mega Knob, but it's gonna cost you like three uh, boys, right? And so I would love to see that going forward. I also love the mechanic of these three APL, mm -hmm. like human power level three APL characters that can spend an action point to buff their shooting or their whatever options they already have. I think that's awesome. Gives you, you still have player agency if you want to move, shoot, dash, or if you want to, you know, just buff to the two APL that you would have remaining. I love it. I think it's great. I want to see that uh, as a theme for all teams moving forward. Which leads me to what this reminds me of, uh, which is Elites from last edition of Kill Team. I think more of this, you know, here's a, a buff, a, you know, a cooler model that you can take in place of two or three models, um, I think is great. And I know they've done it before with, you know, like Warp Cub and all this kind of stuff. It's been done before. But I feel like more of this would go a long way towards, you know, the community. I know a lot of you guys are really bummed and upset still about um, the customization not being there. And this is a great way of saying, hey, you know, it, we're, this is a different game, but there is still some customization, right? You can take a Guardsman Fire Team, but you can also take a Bulgren or Ogren if you if you want to do that, right? Or you could take, uh, you know, here's your Necron Fire Team of Warriors, but you can sub some of them out and take, what is it, a something Arch, the big spear guy? I don't know, right? Who cares? Uh, and you can do that. I feel like that would really give people a lot of what they're missing, and I want to see it in every kill team going forward. And for the record, I've been fairly doubtful of the whole concept of an Elites release, at least anytime soon. And this is not quite Elites, because it's it's not like a really elite model, but it is a character model with special abilities, and more of this would be cool. And so it just it makes me hopeful and happy to see this kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, love that. Love the new characters, the new models, kind of elite-ish, elite's light um, feel that at least gives me. Maybe you feel differently, um, but anyways, really like it. Kind of piggybacking off of the last thing, uh, I love the two APL and three APL models in the same kill team, right? Uh, like I really love Scions. As, a comp as far as compendium teams go, I really like Scions because you can have, it's a two APL team, but with APL shifting and with the special forces, tac ops and that kind of stuff, you can have like these like two, three APL and like three APL light models in your kill team if you play it right. And I love that, I love the versatility because I, I, I've always been an elite team player, always like Marines, Chaos Marines, all that kind of stuff. But in this edition, they just don't have the tools to play the game. And uh, which is kind of a bummer right now. I'm sure it'll be fixed at some point. I don't wanna talk about that. I'm not really scared or upset about that. Um, I think it'll be fine. But right now, they don't have the tools to play the game. I'm sure they will at some point. Uh, so these two APL teams that can kind of fake three APL really do something for me um, that is really fun. And uh, I want to see more of the two APL, three PL, three APL mix in teams going forward. Side note on that, I think the Wormblade kill team roster will be kind of like, will they, won't they to, to fight up against, right? Like, are they going to bring four, like full on, you know, 14 body spam? Or are they gonna take the elite choices? Which elite choices are they gonna take? All that kind of, you know, I'm sure we'll figure this out as the meta for them kind of develops and stuff. Um, but I think this is a really 
interesting roster that you kind of aren't, aren't sure what to expect. And that is also that kind of psychological warfare um, is also a thing, right? That that, that people don't kind of think about, but not knowing what your opponent is going to take. Um, you know, and if your buddy and you are like sitting across the table for each other talking about what you're going to take, that's one thing. But if you're in a more competitive environment when you're not sure what exactly they're going to take, that's something to think about. Don't beat me up for this. Don't jump me over this. But I kind of feel like this Wormblade team is sort of evidence of Games Workshop listening to the community. And at the same time, trying to get us to buy expensive $30 models, right? Make no mistake. Now, you know, these intentions aren't wholly pure, um, but I think they are listening and giving us a little bit of what we want, while at the same time trying to get us to buy more things, which is, at the end of the day as a business, always their goal to get us to buy more things. At the end of that though, that, that, that being said, side on onto that, there's always a creative way to get something built, right? I think, I think the Sanctus models um, can be kit bashed pretty easily and reposed out of uh, the Neophytes kit. Uh, I think if you just have a pile of green stuff laying around and a, uh, and a Gene Sealer cult head, you can easily make uh, the Locust model. Uh, I think with a box of uh, Acolytes, whatever they're called, um, the three arm, four arm guys, whatever, I think you could easily make a Gunslinger Keller Morph. So you don't have to buy those expensive models, rest assured. There are creative ways to get around that. Here's a really small thing that, ma that means a lot to me, Ben the Battle Bro. Um, on the Neophyte, the leader, okay? All of his melee weapon, weapon options, Chainsword, Power Pick, Power Maul, they're all good. All three of those options, I can see you taking those against certain teams, right? Because the Chainsword has Ceaseless. The only other Chainsword in, that I know of that has Ceaseless is the uh, the Sergeant from the Veteran Guardsman Kill Team. Everybody, Every other Chainsword is absolutely worthless. So, to me, every melee weapon having a use and it being useful uh, I think it's great. I love to see it. Really happy with that. It's just a little side thing that I wanted to mention, and I'm happy about that. So I think GW is kind of listening to us a little bit, right? Talon's got balanced fairly quickly. Um, you know, Pathies really need some help because they're like eating everybody's lunch and laughing about it right now. Uh, you know, and maybe some commando changes. I don't know, whatever. I don't really care that much about them, but Pathfinders are just um, kind of a nightmare right now. Uh, and so I think it's a good thing. And all the melee weapons being useful, I think is good. And the different troop choices and kind of elite-ish models that you can sub in, all good things that I think they're kind of paying attention to. And, uh, and I like that. You know, we all paid good money for the compendium, or maybe you didn't, maybe you were smart and you just used some resources online. Uh, you know, but a lot of us paid good money for the $50 for the compendium, which is a shame that it is so blatantly, the teams in the compendium are so blatantly outclassed by all of the bespoke and specialist releases, right? We should all be getting a refund on our compendium, quite frankly. Um, but like this team is, in, in particular, the compendium team is great. Wormblade obviously has the tools to play this game better. Right, the spoke teams just have better rules. Just there's no, you can't debate that, right? Although Compendium Brood Covens is a great team, like I said, I think some of the best that the Compendium has to offer, Wormblade can do it just better, right? Who did it better, Wormblade? But if you say, hey, I have a bunch of acolytes with heavy rock saws that are so dope, uh, and I have some metamorphs because, and I just want to melee people to death because it was like hitting on threes, balance, brutal rending, four or five damage is insane. And if you want to play that, you can do that, and it's still a good team, which I think that should have been the case for all the teams. The compendium should have had good teams in it, and the bespoke teams should be teams that if you want to play at a higher level, if you want to worry about more rules, but be able to play the game a little bit better, it should have been that way. Not compendium is some of these teams are crap and just suck it up until we give you better teams. It should have been competent bespoke is at least different or better, right? And so in this team, I don't think that Wormblade um, makes uh, Brood Covens obsolete. They obviously have more tools to play the game. But I still think if you want to play Brood Covens for the Compendium, you can do so and not get tabled. And that's a good thing. So let me know in the comments what you think about the Wormblade kill team. Obviously, I'm a big fan. My brother Sam, who is a Gene Sealer Cult player, is also really happy with this. I've seen a few people online who are like passionately upset. Um, I don't quite, I don't get that personally, but if you want to help me understand that, if you're also passionately upset about it, you can tell me in the comments. Uh, or if you think they're just meh, drop them in the comments below, right? Like they're not blowing Pathfinders out of the water. They're not blowing any, I don't think they're, I don't think they're blowing any kill team bespoke a kill team out of the water. But I think that, yeah, I think they're a great team. I think they're a, a great, I think I can sit up there with any of the bespoke teams just from looking at the rules. I don't have any experience with them yet. 
Um, but I think I have a lot of great tools to play the game. I, they seem like a team that could just play the objectives, play the mission um, with just about anybody. And that's cool that they feel very flavorful in that way. All right, guys, thank you for watching and liking and commenting and being so nice and cool over the internet. We have passed uh, 2,500 subs, which is just super wild. Thanks so much. Uh, as I, I'm gonna try and, listen guys, let's just be honest. I'm shooting for weekly videos, but I'm kind of hitting every 10 days or every two weeks. Um, but I'm gonna try and work on that. And I have some ideas for maybe some more content to put out in between those two weeks. We'll see, um, but uh, more cool stuff on the way, guys. I have Drukari on the way. I have a cool um, Vostroian conversion on the way. You're gonna start seeing some more models. I know there's been a model drought on this channel, uh, but it's just been really busy and getting sick and you know holiday holidays, all that kind of stuff. But models will be coming back soon, and I am really excited to show them to you. So thanks for watching. I have been Ben, and uh, I think I'll see you around.